Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to VR Roundup, episode number five. It's Halloween, guys. My first Halloween, or I should say my family's first here on the East Coast, got me thinking about past Halloweens and my buddy Exidy, who rocked Halloween like nobody. It was freaking fantastic. The master of costumes. He hasn't celebrated it the last few years. His kids are grown up, as is mine. But when they were young, he was the undisputed master. Two of my favorite costumes his fairy godfather costume, which was part Tinkerbell, the fairy, and part Al Capone-style gangster. And fortunately, no pictures of that exist. There does exist a picture of my favorite costume, and that was his sumo wrestler. Traditional, including the uh, midriff garb only, if you can imagine that. And uh, Exidy is uh, capable of a lot of sumo visually. He's a big boy. And he wore just that midriff and removed every hair over every inch of his body and went to work like that. He did win the best costume contest, but holy crap, did it take guts to go to work like that and drive to work like that. But he did it. Anyways, hopefully you guys have a safe and fantastic Halloween. With that said, let's get started. First up, CCP Studios, the devs behind massively multiplayer online game EVE Online, have closed down their virtual reality wing. And that, of course, the wing responsible for EVE Valkyrie. And I've got some thoughts on that, and we'll talk about that in a second. But first, one of the employees, Sigurdur Gunnarsson, from their closing Atlanta studio, had this to say in a tweet. The CCP Atlanta studio is being closed down and after eight years, my time with CCP is coming to an end. Now to figure out what to do next. And according to the article, the decision affects around 100 employees and the leadership while still believing in VR long term feel it is still a few years from maturation. Now my own thoughts on that are as follows. Exclusivity is kind of in my opinion, a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it gives company companies the funds necessary to create a game when the market for that type of game really isn't there yet. And that's a good thing in the sense that the people who have purchased that technology, they'll be able to play that game. The problem is, though, it doesn't follow some of the other things that their traditional model takes care of, like customer loyalty, fan base, all of that stuff. You've got a game that right off the bat can alienate customers because you haven't created the game for their platform. So what you effectively do is you create a pretty cool game. By the time the exclusivity ends, though, you've got some customers who are bitter and won't support it just out of principle cut your nose off to spite your face type of deal. And then you've got others for whom the game is simply too old. Uh, of course, some people are going to buy it, but some people, mm, not always enough. And they did their best. They expanded the game to other platforms, but ultimately didn't sell enough copies. Now, it's all speculation on my part, but I do think the traditional model has benefits. And building up a fan base and customer loyalty, certainly one of them. Hard to say if this impacted them and, you know, maybe they would have sur not survived regardless. But take a look at their game, EVE Online. It's a game that has survived pretty much against all odds. It offers something that no other massively multiplayer game offers. And it's extremely loyal to its fan base. So here was a company on the one hand exhibiting loyalty to its fans and its customers and then on the other hand not showing that. And maybe that contrast, who knows, again just speculation, was too much. Either way, we knew there was going to be attrition. I've said it multiple times and there's been multiple examples of companies for VR that have come and gone. That's part of it. That's part of the cycle and... There will be victors, 
and they're unfortunately will be the vanquished and sorry to see them go but uh, if it's not sustainable it's not sustainable next up my wife and i huge gangster movie fans and at the top of that british gangster movies and i'm not just talking the predictable guy Ritchie stuff i'm talking gems and there's tons of them i'll probably put a few up if you're into that you can check it out in the description below Speaking of that, and we'll get to the game in a second, but there's a TV show on, and it's on Netflix. It's called Peaky Blinders, and it takes place in Birmingham just post-World War I. If you like your British gangster movies, well, this is a series, and it's absolutely fantastic, very underrated. It portrays the time correctly, the city correctly. It does play loose with a lot of chronological events though some happen decades before they actually happened but for the most part if you can ignore some of the timeline inconsistencies the setting and the characters are absolutely fantastic speaking of which at the sony playstation event where they showed a bunch of trailers among them these vr trailers first up blood and truth mm. Speaking of British gangster movies, this appearing to be a British gangster game looks pretty standard in terms of FPS gameplay, but hopefully delivers in the story department. The trailer reveals some of the mechanics, like the picklock mechanic. It also shows the player playing with security camera videotapes and even controlling security cameras in real time. Also a game that allows you to make someone do the bullet dance, which is very freaking cool. Of course, bullet dance within the realms of fiction. Next up, Megalith. This is from Disruptive Games. Sees you playing the role of a titan. Now, the art style, pretty cool. Reminds me of a cross between Borderlands and No Man's Sky. With more parts, No Man's Sky. The game itself, bit of a mystery. What we do know, you're playing the part of a titan, a type of demigod hoping to become a full-fledged deity. We can see the game is first person as the last bit of the trailer has you looking at your hands, the traditional kind of I'm in VR, oh my God, these hands look cool type look, which most of us have done at one time or another. We'll have to wait till the game is closer to release to find out a bit more. Next up, Apex Construct from developer Fast Travel Games. This game appears to show a post-apocalyptic cityscape. You're playing the part of a robot or cyborg, complete with a bow and arrow, fighting mostly robotic enemies. You do this in a first-person perspective, and like the previous game, Blood and Truth, the game seems to have a similar picklock mechanic, though in this game it appears to be more of a general hacking skill than one specifically for doors. And then last up, we have Star Child. This one is from developer Playful. Appears to be a bit more of a mystery. The trailer showing a futuristic Tron-like world on an alien planet. Uh, judging by the two aliens that appear briefly in frame, your character, female lead, appears to have some type of energy coursing through her which interacts with the computers and the machinery that is around her. Next up, in two days, the GTX 1070 Ti is going to enter the marketplace. Let's take a quick look at this card. First, the obvious, a comparison to the GeForce GTX 1070, the non-Ti version. The 1070 Ti has 2432 cores versus the regular's 1920. Both of them have 8 gigs of DDR5 and memory speeds of 8 gigs per second even the clock speed is the same so what we end up essentially is a battle of cores and what is of most interest to me is how it compares to the card that i currently have which is the 1080 founders edition speculation is the card is going to slot itself performance wise between the 1070 and the 1080 founders edition but based on the core count and the memory speed my bet is it's a little closer to the 1080 FE than it is to the 1070. Pretty much two thirds of the way there is how I see it. Price difference about $60 US. It's gonna be really interesting to see the benchmarks. When those get released across the board for different types of games, we're really gonna have a better idea of how this sits 
bang for the buck wise and ultimately as a card for a VR rig. So let's talk about that buzzword exclusivity. And that word can start up heated debates. It can be used as a scapegoat or an excuse. But the truth of the matter is exclusivity can be a great shot in the arm. Head start for a company to ensure that costs for their game are covered. But the other side of that is, of course, what I talked about with regards to fan base, etc. That may have been the issue with Eve Valkyrie. Again, all speculation. Let's take a look at some actual stats, though, some non-speculative stats. We know that Resident Evil 7 Biohazard sold 2.23 million copies globally. Estimates for those who played the VR version run from 10 to 25%, with 10% being a confirmed low-end statistic. Up for debate is how high that figure goes, but let's assume a range of between 10 to 20% played the VR version. Given roughly 1 million PlayStation VR sales by September 2017, we have a range of between 23 and 45% of PlayStation VR owners who have played Resident Evil 7. That's a pretty nice attach rate. Now, let's take a look at the top PlayStation 4 games for 2016 as a comparison as we have known metrics for that period. For example, we know that 50 million PlayStation 4s were sold globally by the end of 2016. We also have figures for the top 20 PlayStation 4 games. Here's a list. Now, to be a proper apples to apples comparison, we would want to look at a list for the same time period. Doing so, I've done it, shows number one as being FIFA 17 with about 10 million copies sold. But forget that for now. Let's use PlayStation 4 lifetime sales to gauge against with PlayStation 4 VR's Resident Evil 7. Top game versus top game, period. So the top game since launch for PlayStation 4 is GTA 5. That sold 16.2 million copies to date. And again, we know the figure of 50 million PlayStation 4 units sold globally. That represents 32% attach rate, which sits right in the middle of our range for Resident Evil 7 on PlayStation VR. That indicates to me PlayStation VR sales are not only healthy given the size of the market, but they're not really stagnating. Obviously, we want that market to grow, but the 1 million PlayStation VR owners are absolutely doing their part. Next up, I've always been fascinated with pirates, loved reading about them as a kid. I loved watching whatever I could on pirates, whether it was fact or fiction, didn't matter. However, anything pirate related for me, I measure according to the Sid Meier game Pirates, either happening before pirates or after. Pirates was a game that allowed you to live out your pirate fantasy. And coolest, I think, for me was that it allowed you to play various countries. And yes, of course, I could play as a Dutchman. And I would imagine myself on ships built with windmills. People make fun of them, but they could build ships three times faster than other nations because of the sawmills powered by these windmills, which was really cool. Well, if, like me, you've been wanting a pirate game for VR, specifically one that models itself after Sid Meier's Pirates, Narrows may be that game. Resolution Games, they're the developer for that, and their co-founder and CEO, Tommy Palm, he said the following about the game. One of my inspirations to become a game designer was from playing Sid Meier's Pirates in the 1980s. The golden age of piracy is a mine of lore, myth, and adventure that is an excellent base for any story and especially something so immersive as VR. As a studio, one of our core focuses has been on truly mastering character and narrative development, something that we feel works well in VR and AR and really comes to life in Narrows. So according again to the devs, Narrows is going to offer players a view of a pirate's life, exploring numerous voyages on the sea, and creating their own mariner myths. The game 
is anticipated to release in 2018. No idea on the price, no real examples of gameplay. Hopefully, as the release date draws near, we have a better idea of how the game looks and plays. Well, guys, like I said, hopefully you and your loved ones have a safe and awesome Halloween. Get your costume on if you can. I know it's lame. I'm not sitting in mine here, but uh, have a good one. With that said, guys, as always, cheers.